Hey guys, it's a big deal here. Back again with yet another video. And today it's a fusion of two of my videos. Yukon South, a diesel flanger on the Durango and Silverton, shot in 2021, and Through the Snow, Not Around It, which was shot two years earlier in 2019. I'd originally put these videos on YouTube without any narration, and if you prefer not to hear my voice, they're available on my channel. Today we're going to focus on the stars of this production, the Flangers. While seeing the X White Pass and Yukon Alcos in the lower 48 is pretty darn exciting, let's talk about the X Denver and Rio Grande Western Flanger behind it. These Flangers were home built by the Denver and Rio Grande, the predecessor to the DNRGW, and at one time the railroad had a fleet of 11 of them. Until the end of Rio Grande winter operations, these cars could be seen being pulled behind locomotives to help clear the railroad and help prevent the more labor and cost intensive rotaries from being fired up. But why not just stick a plow on the front of the locomotive and call it good? Well the flangers seen here provide a two-fold attack on the right-of-way. One, they had plows on the side which would allow it to push snow further from the rails than the locomotive did on the initial pass. Second, in between the rails was a blade which was the true flanger itself. This blade dug between the rails to clear out a path for the wheel flanges that keep the locomotive and cars on the rails. Built up snow and ice in these flangeways can cause equipment to come off the track if not maintained properly. Its up and down position is noted by the switch target in the middle of the car as it must be raised to clear various things on the line such as grade crossings, guardrails, and track switches. The Flanger OF here came to the Durango and Silverton after being sold to them by the Coombers and Toltec, which had an excess of them, and the fledgling Durango and Silverton needed equipment to restore winter service, which had not happened on the branch since the 1950s. Once on the Silverton, the flanger has been rebuilt since to make use of the power reverse cylinders that were taken off the 470s in the 1980s. This now allows the plows to be extended and retracted on the fly to clear bridge supports, rock walls, and other hazards. The wings are controlled by an operator in the cupola of Caboose 0540. As the flanger trains cautiously cross the downtown streets, we find that this section of the track has already been taken care of by maintenance of way equipment to help out while navigating these crossings. After maneuvering through the downtown area, we find diesel number 107 making its way across the Animus River. We next head north through the Hermosa Valley, where the flanger makes quick work of the snow on the level glacial valley.
Just beyond Hermosa, we're treated to a new sensation. Climbing, as the valley drops away, we'll head on towards Rockwood. Down there is Shalom Lake, just beyond the trees in the background, as the 476 and Flanger cross Elbert Creek just outside of Rockwood. As we come out of Rockwood, the train seems to pull in his elbows as it navigates around the switch stands in the yard and heads out through the Rockwood cut. From here the train moves out onto the spectacular high line where the rails cling to a narrow ledge 200 feet above the Animus River. After clearing the tracks from Rockwood onwards, the flangers turn at Cascade Canyon and head for the roundhouse. We catch them south of Rockwood and traveling through Hermosa.
If you take a close look above the number boards of the 107, you'll notice there are three lights above the cab. These are class lights which are used to tell others what kind of train this is. In this case, the white light is the same as the white flag seen on the steam engines, meaning that this is an extra or unscheduled train. If the green lights were illuminated, or the locomotives carry green flags, it would mean that it is the first part of a scheduled train that has been broken into more than one section. This is one of the ways that the Durango and Silverton keeps railroad traditions like this alive. Arriving back into Durango, the line has now been cleared of snow and is once again able to take passengers up the scenic Animus River Canyon, unimpeded thanks to the tireless effort of these locomotives and their crews. <laughs> 